Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So, welcome to the guest lecture on uh, fundamentals of uh, 3D printing. So, let me introduce our uh, guest speaker, Dr. Uh, Falguni Pati, sir. So, so a brief profile of the sir. So, sir is uh, associate professor in biomedical engineering department at uh, IIT Hyderabad. So, sir is uh, completed his uh, PhD from uh, IIT Kanpur, sorry, Karagpur, and uh, he has uh, postdoctoral appointments in Postec, South Korea, and uh, KTH, Sweden, prior to joining to IIT Hyderabad in 2015. Sir, in his uh, lab at Hyderabad, focuses on developing innovative tish tissue engineering products and uh, in vivo tissue organ models and 3D bioprinting technology. So on his uh, account, sir, is uh, having uh, 30 general pu publications, 10 book chapters, and uh, one book, sir, is published. So and uh, sir, is filed uh, one US patent and uh, five Indian patents. So sir, is also given uh, 50 keynotes as a speaker and invite invited lectures so we will welcome you sir so i will uh, hand over the session to you sir please uh, continue the session yes, sir. yes yes yeah thank you thank you dr ramanna so thank you for the introduction and also to, in, to invite me for this guest lecture am i audible yes yes sir okay fine so yes, so good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today to this uh, lecture, to this lecture 3D printing in pharmacy. So in this lecture, uh, I'll be discussing about the what are the different, different types different of, different types of uh, sorry, I'm getting sorry, echo. I'm getting echo. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I'm getting an. No, I'm getting an. Uh, can uh, you, miss, can uh, you need to unmute? You need to unmute. You need to mute everybody. Mute everybody. Hello. 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 Yeah, I think now it's fine. Okay, so let's start this. So the topic is uh, 3D printing in pharmacy. So in this talk, what I will do, I will start with uh, a very basic introduction about 3D printing and then uh, different modalities of 3D printing, how they can be used for, and then we'll come to how they can be used for pharmacy. So you must, you are from, as you are from pharmacy background, so you must be aware of different pharmaceutical technologies. Those are used for development of doses forms uh, like tablets, capsules, and others. others. So nowadays, and those are mostly manufactured by conventional technique, like by rotary press or by complex and by uh, granular and followed by complex and other processes. Right? But uh, in this talk, I will discuss how 3D printing can come in a come handy to develop this kind of uh, pharmaceutical doses forms and where exactly you can use. So because this is a very new trend, new trend is not very new. It's like almost this has been started almost like a decade. In the last 10 years, people in pharmacy have been using uh, 3D printing for developing different novel, novel drug delivery systems. And there are certain advantages. I will also come to that. There are what are the different advantages of having this 3D printing technology for drug manufacturing for pharmacy application. So let's start with the uh, many of you must be having these questions. Uh, this question like why 3D printing is why 3D printing for pharmacy, right? Because in pharmacy, we know that we manufacture ca tablet capsules by different processes. So, and 3D printing is a very alien to this, to pharmacy. Like it's earlier, it's like earlier, it was not being used for pharmaceutical applications, but nowadays it is being used. And why it is so? So you all know like drug delivery systems that refers to the method of or process of administering a pharmaceutical compound to the for a therapeutic effect on a human patient, on human or animals, right? But many of many of such uh, 
for many of such applications, what do you see? We see inter-individual variability, right? Pace or patient-to-patient -patient variability. So what happens? Because uh, due to the due to the, all this, like races, genders, ages, pharmacogenetics, and pharmacokinetics character characteristics, so the patient can respond to the drug different way. Also, the drug can have a different response on a particular patient. So the inter-individual variability is very high, right? So that that is one issue to be tackled. The other thing is this: uh, the new drug development process is not that very easy or convenient. Like it takes a lot of time, lot of money, time, money, and energy. Okay. So because this novel doses from that development of novel doses that is also limited. Okay. Because because it, huge cost is involved in all this to change the production line, and also because of the wide array of doses required. Because if you have, suppose if you want to change it, change uh, something, change a very little thing in a doses form also, then the whole production line can need, may need to be changed. So that's, that, that involves a huge cost, okay? And not, because not, and not all the pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical doses manufacturer or the pharmaceutical industry, they are ready to do that, right? Other thing is developing new drug is a complex process. It's expensive and it's time consuming. So what is the trend now? Optimizing the viability of the already existing drug, drugs, like their therapeutic effect or the doses, those things are mostly being optimized to have better effect. That and that has gained interest over the, over, over the years. Now additive manufacturing, definitely it's a new alternative for deployment of controlled uh, release doses form because it can produce personalized or unique doses forms and more complex does drug release profiles. Now, I will come to that why additive manufacturing has the capability to, to do all these things. And we'll see in a moment how we can change the process altogether, all the process without disturbing the whole process or without disturbing the whole production line, suppose. <laughs> Now, you see the recent development, FDA also encourages drug manufacturers to produce solid oral doses form because to increase the, meet the increasing demands of oral drug delivery system. Because oral drug delivery system is very easy to administer, right? The patient, they themselves can take the drug at their convenience. Unlike other, like unlike parenterals and others where you need somebody else, like you need assistance from somebody to, to de deliver the or to administer the drug. But what oral doses form is not, not like that. So that's why FDA, they encourage manufacturer to produce oral or solid oral doses form for most of the drugs. If it is possible, then that can be the easy way. So that a patient-centered drug development process can be developed whether the patient themselves can administer the drug. Now, ad additive manufacturing has the potential to meet and exceed that process like that expectation because in additive manufacturing we always can do that we can develop solid oral doses form from the various drugs and another thing is the due to the purpose and the demand of the drug products additive manufacturing can also solve this because it's a continuous aim process and it's a yeah, it's a batch by batch manufacturing and say not only really batch by batch say drug is a doses form by form manufacturing process it's an individual or each doses form manufactured separately differently that can be done and you see the conventional manufacturing process that's a continuous process like so something like you must have seen the rotary press or maybe the other other processes where you see there's a line, line of products that's the production line if you introduce that because you need to introduce your raw materials at certain stage and then that that will go to the next phase next stage next day and then then it will get the product so it's a continuous process and and most of the time that those all the doses from those are manufactured in bulk right so that's why the cost is low cost is lesser in case of commercial manufacturing because you are produ you are producing the drugs in bulk in bulk in bulk means in in uh, in an uh, size that's huge amount of size so that that cost can be lower. But if you in case of additive manufacturing process, it's not like the conventional one, it's not a continuous process. It's a batch by batch process. So very little amount of media, doses, very little amount of raw materials you are taking, and then you are producing the dry, produce the doses forms. So that's why uh, there may be some, uh, there may be a cases where the additive, you may have some notion that 
additive manufacturing the drug sorry the doses from built by additive manufacturing may be higher the cost may be higher definitely it is true the cost may be higher because you are producing single by single doses forms and in a batch process it's not it's not bulk manufacturing it's not continuous process so that's why the cost would be higher but remember this thing now suppose if you want to make a little very little change in the production line of a conventional manufacturing process then the whole process has to be modified just a, suppose suppose in your case you are producing a doses for i give a simple very simple example suppose you are producing 500 mg of paracetamol tablets right now because the process is standardized so uh, each and every tablet will have almost like 500 500 mg of plus minus a little bit 500 mg of paracetamol tablets right but now suppose if i want some tablets to be 400 mg some tablets to be 600 mg then if i want to do that changes in now in the manufacturing process in our production line then the whole process needs to be changed because the die die that punching the die that size would be varied the size and range to be varied what about the, the weight of granules putting in each die that would be different so all this like you have to, you need to change the whole process so that causes huge cost okay so that's why in conventional manufacturing process if you want to change certain things then it will involve the cost are much much higher but in contrary for additive manufacturing that those kind of changes you can easily do suppose if you want 10 tablets of 400 mg paracetamol 10 another 10 tablets of 600 mg you can easily do that so that's why AM process has certain advantage of, of where you can handle the batch manufacturing process easily. Now, coming to the additive manufacturing, you now you must have understood why additive manufacturing or where additive manufacturing can be helpful for pharmaceutical doses manufacturing process. Now, coming to the additive manufacturing or 3D printing, 3D printing, if you have some experience on 3D printing or if you know what is 3D printing, then you must have witnessed that this technology actually basically allow you or allows you to manufacture or to make prototypes or to produce something whatever you can think of like whatever the design you can think of whatever the structure you can think of suppose you think of a particular design or a particular product right that is the thing like first always it will start from like your imagination right whatever you can imagine you can imagine a, a very like is a some product right so that is the, your imagination name now now what next next you will you will develop a CAD model or a virtual data like a 3d geometry or 3d data the design you can make with the help of some CAD software like SolidWorks, SolidWorks and there are many AutoCAD or Autodesk there are many such cases many such softwares they are available so we using that actually basically you can design any 3d structure okay so that is the designing process or that is the cad modeling we call also call engineering that is cad modeling so where you can basically you can design an object okay now the next step is when you have designed that object you save it in a particular format and then load that that to the printer 3d printer now there are various types of 3d printers i will come to that what are the different types of 3d printers and how we can use them what are the different materials you use them that i will come to that but before that just remember whenever you have designed some 3d 3d geometry or 3d uh, 3d design so that is loaded to the 3d printer then you can actually basically print the structure given the command like this this the draw the data from this that will act as a command and you can basically generate the 3d structure so here what do you do? from a virtual prototype or from a virtual object that object you can only see on your computer screen so or that can be printed and you can get a product you can get a prototype so it basically after the getting the prototype you can feel it you can see it from different angles you can actually have a feel of how the product looks like how what is the size and all these things right so from virtual 3d printing process helps you to make products from a prototype from virtual virtual prototype to physical prototype now in this process there are mainly three main steps like the modeling printing and finishing modeling is the that what i was saying the very first part that developing the what the developing the geometry 3d geometry or virtual data virtual design or the 3d design the cat model that is the modeling 
next is actually printing actual printing is where basically the 3d printers that allows you to miss that helps to print the object whatever you have designed that object that is the thing and based upon of course it is always taking the instruction from your cat miss in the command is from the cat model that that is using that itself providing the command for the printing thing so here and 3d printing is a layer by layer manufacturing process what is layer by layer because here we are printing from scratch nothing is there but we are slowly we are we are putting small is small amount of material and in a layer by layer we can develop the whole structure right so that's what in 3d printing we do the next part is finishing finishing is a process like where not all the time whatever you have 3d printed those things are ready for market many a times we need to have the finishing line we need to have the support yeah suppose the polishing of operation washing polishing those things and if there are support structure i'll come to that if there are support structure they're removing the support structure all these things are also come into the finishing operations what kind of structure can be built you see there are different kind of structures can be built nowadays starting from the skull model some tissue engineer or tissues or organs that does can also be meant and also this can be used for various other applications other purposes now if you see the conventional manufacturing tablet manufacturing process how where exactly this 3d printing will suit you see now this this already probably this thing this uh, flowchart you know right how from because first things you need you need the active pharmaceutical ingredients like the active drugs okay that the api right that you need then you add some excipients to for to suit that process or to help you or to aid you to develop that kind of pharmaceutical doses from the, those are the whatever the experience required you can need to mix with this and then these all this process like milling sieving formulation granulation mixing compression and coating so all these things then after the packaging and application so this so this is the whole process for conventional manufacturing process but when you are working with 3d printers then this you need you need to maybe you need not to do all these things actually you need active pharmaceutical ingredients and excipients but maybe the excipients would be little different from whatever you're using many a times they may be similar so you need to mix this so that's the formulation that's the formulation for 3d printing you develop so that formulation after this formulation develop then you can go for directly go for 3d printing of the doses form and then you can go add, then you can need to package it and, and that it, it will be go for it will go for application so here basically we are uh, minimizing all these different steps and directly you are developing the formulation and that can be used for 3d printing development of a 3d printed object these are the schematic or the process how this suppose our interest is to develop this kind of printed this kind of suppose the take you think of this is a tablet right now we our if our interest is to make this kind of tablets then what is the starting point or what is the initial point to start with we will always will start with the CAD model of this thing. So this one, we have to make a CAD model, or we have to make a 3D model, 3D design of the same thing in a soft, in a particular software like any CAD CAD software. We make a 3D model of it, whatever you want to print, right? The, so here, you can basically, when you are making the 3D model, basically we are putting all the all the engineering dimensions like the height, the radius, or the diameter of the structure, radius of the structure. If it has certain this kind of elevated geometry what is the angle all these things like basically you need to define each and every detail of this object and then you are importing the data in an is in time a still file format a still format and then a still file is basically nothing but a, a file the or the this is a sorry this is a, a g code file so that the basically what will happen the printer can understand that and that thing that will the, the uh, printer can understand so they still you have say you will save that in STL file format and then that import STL file can be imported and then there are other processes like slicing is a another major operation for before even printing what slicing done because in 3d printing remember in 3d printing always we are printing the structure layer by layer right it's a layer by layer manufacturing process so basically for before even do the that layer by layer manufacturing the object also it need to be sliced in horizontal direction right that's what we do here the objects are sliced in a horizontal direction so that what are the object that we have multiple slices in the horizontal direction of the same object so then now each slice will be taken at a time and that will be printed in a in a layer 
and then the next for the next layer again another slice will be taken and that will be printed so similarly like, like this so the slice by slices that will be printed in a layer by layer fashion to get the whole geometry now coming to the a very brief important introduction of different types of 3d printer because before we were actually going for how 3d printing can help in to develop pharmaceutical manufacturing we also to understand what types of 3d printers are available okay what are the different types of 3d printers available and how like and what what is the mechanism of action what kind of materials they can handle we'll see all these things okay very fast technology is the stereolithography and in stereolithography basically this is a process by which we solidify the photo curable resin material or liquid photopolymer what are liquid photo photopolymers because when you shine light on this photopolymer on this material they will get solidified or get hardened so that that is the property of this material and they are they are because of this photo cross linking that that happens so that the or photopolymerization because of the photopolymerization upon uh, upon shining light on this material they will start polymerizing so that you can get the solid solid thing but in sla we are not exposing light to the whole area or the whole liquid surface at a time what i do we shine light laser light with the help of laser so because laser it has a very we can generate a laser light of very fine diameter spot when you find a spot size so that we can then we can when you shine the laser on the top surface of this liquid what it does it will start initiate that photopolymerization process so that the that liquid polymer photopolymer that will solidify and we can get the 3d structure then basically we need to move the laser in xy in xy plane and that how the laser will move because of this this xy mirroring uh, scanning mirror that will deflect the laser at different areas or different surface different uh, coordinates of the of the liquid surface so that then the photo initiation process will start and we'll get the whole structure and then we basically we print on a stage when the first layer is done then again the stage will go down so that the another layer of liquid will come on the top and then we will start the again the same process will be repeated again again to make the whole structure these are the structures that is printed by this stereolithography technique but remember this thing this is a laser based process we need the what is the material in this case material is liquid photopolymer or photosensitive resin those are used here this is a video of the same process where basically what happens yeah this these videos are available freely available on youtube you can see all the videos okay these are open source videos available on the youtube so here you see this light whatever is moving that is the laser light that is moving on the stand there is a stage that makes the missing thing that is the stage and now this is the photopolymer and whenever the laser is shining on the photopolymer you see that a a line kind of thing is appearing so that is the object so now this kind of object can be easily manufactured with this with the help of this photo stereolithography and this is the cad model generation of the cad model then the missing operation and also the so here actually you are making all the you're making ready whatever is print getting printed and then you load that into the printer and it is the printer so this is the stage that stage is getting lowered into the liquid photopolymer so that we have a very fine layer of liquid on the on the surface and now the laser is on and then it is scanning the top surface so that we can get a the object you know and then it is going here the laser generator and the deflector and the mirror mirrors so it is getting deflected the laser is getting deflected on the surface and so that we can get the structure from this this is how laser laser scans on the surface then after every layer you see the stage is going down by one layer you see the path when the laser is done going down one layer and then you are basically here it goes down one layer and then again print again goes down another layer goes down another layer then you need to you can take out the object from the liquid path and then that is washed polished again some amount of uv ray is given so to solidify the object fully all these things and removal of so that support all these things are done at this stage and then you see is there again curing for some time so that the there should be should not be any uncured material in surface so that because the uncured material is toxic in nature so that's why we need to remove all the uncured material then the other process like the color is we can put some paint and then then that the object can be ready for this thing right 
the next process is our next technology is selective laser sintering or this also called powder bed manufacturing process where actually basically we need powders in this case the material is powder the powder can be of ceramic powder photo uh, metal powder those things are mostly used we can also use polymer powder even uh, this thing other uh, powders can be used glass powder this one that can also be used now here the process is powders you know that if we heat the powders at a certain beyond a certain temperature then what will happen those powders are it start act start activating or start binding to each other right that process is called centering if when we uh, heat the powder beyond a, at a certain temperature at a very high temperature then the powders will stick to it or they will bind to each other that process is centering now in this case basically we are centering the powders at a very high temperature but when we are not centering the whole bed powder bed at a time what we do we shine the laser light and when the sign light laser light is hitting the surface it is actually basically transferring energy to the powder so the powder the powder is getting heated up that spot that side that area where the part this uh, laser is shining or laser strike so that part of the powder so that is getting heated up and basically then it is getting binded bounded to each other and now if you move your laser on the soft surface of this powder bed then basically you are keep on binding the powders on the path of the laser right so that can be done and now that is actually basically done so when i when i first started this is the stage that stage is almost present at the top and just a very fine layer of powders that powder is bed is there on the on the top of this uh, stage or the printing platform and then the laser is on and you are basically you are curing the powder or not curing sorry you are solidifying the powder or centering the powder here and then basically and then whenever the first layer is done the stage is moved down one layer and then this leveling drum that put another layer of powder on the top surface and also level the top surface of the powder and the same process is the laser laser light is laser is on also already on and the same process is repeated again and again so this is called selective laser sintering here also we need laser to cure the or to sinter the material right so this kind of structure can be built you see here because it is made from powder so it has sandy appearance or grainy appearance because of the powder particle size so that, that's why we need to use very fine powders so the particle size would be very less so that we can get a very so good surface finish but anyway the surface finish is always coarse it's rough because of the sand because of the powder used this is a process here this is a the creating the cat geometry and arranging them to for printing so it is the pre printing basically they are arranging all different kind of structure whatever you need to build with the help of this cat geometry now all these structures they, they are well so this is the machine so they are observing how this powder thing now this is the powder bed right and this is the leveling drum that is you see after every layer it is going it is leveling the surface and also putting powder and the laser, when the laser is on you see this impression of dtw is coming up so that is the the laser is on so that's why this it is creating some kind of impression so that this actually basically it is sintering the material there itself and whenever the printing is done you can easily take out the materials from the from the thing and then basically you can use them basically you can use them and also you can take out the object you can uh, clean the powder by using air gun you can clean the powder by brush or brush you can uh, now by air gun actually they are cleaning the powder that is not stick to the material so that aren't, aren't stick powder that can be easily taken out uh, easily we can get rid of and then we can take out the material so these are the paint printed structure we printed with the so whatever the design you can make actually basically with the help of this technology you can make different type structures coming to the next printing technology that is fused deposition modeling here what happens this is the most basic or most common technology that you can see most of the places right here this technology here the material is thermoplastic polymer what is thermoplastic material when you heat that material basically the material that material can be molten when you heat that material and again if you again cool down the material will solidify so this heating and cooling can be done repeated time so that the solid liquefying and solidifying of the material can be done multiple times so that is the thermoplastic material 
right so now here we use thermoplastic material and the material is present in the form of filament or where this kind of filaments are there that the material is available in the form of filament and what we have we have a printed and this printed inside the printed there are heat, not, uh, heaters micro heaters are there, are there those are lined up in the printed what it does basically we need to heat the material to so liquefy right so that's why the heater whenever the swell uh, means we are giving electric signals to the heater the heater heats up and it, it is basically liquefying the this thermoplastic filament that is present in the form of fuel thermoplastic filament and with the th filament when the filament is fed into the printhead it liquefies and we are basically again we are pushing the filament through this one so the liquefied material will come out from the nozzle so that process is called extrusion we are extruding the material through a very fine no nozzle or fine orifice and then we can print the, that whatever the molten material that is coming out from the nozzle basically we can this printhead can be moved in xy or also xyz so that we can make able to make the 3d structure some printers they move the uh, this printhead in xy and the stage that is the printing stage on top of the stage you are basically going to print so that stage can be moved in z direction and so there will be various combinations available right and these different types of 3d printed structures or different nowadays many uh, this the plastic toys are made by this 3d printing tech because in this case you can make you can whatever you can actually imagine whatever the shape and size you can imagine don't, that, that can be manufactured by this technology very easily now here is a we have a video where is it this is the process how this, this material is getting printed on the surface on the structure on the surface printed so this the this printed is actually moving on the xy plane and this is the print this is the stage and on top of the stage you are basically putting the material this thermoplastic material basically by liquefying the material and putting them because material is because the printhead is hot that material is liquid inside the printhead when it is coming out in the ambient like in the environment when, I, when you are plotting them on the stage that time it cools down the material solidifies again so that's how we basically we print the whole structure and then after printing is done we basically can take out the structure and then we can remove if there is any support structure and we can use them this is how this process is done <clears throat> now next process what i to discuss is inkjet printing inkjet printing basically works on developing inkjet uh, drop, droplets right and we miss many of us we have office printers in our home or offices so when some of those printers uh, this office printers they work on inkjet principle what is this thing? like here we have this we need to use some kind of ink the ink is almost having consistency of water like consistency or viscosity and then that ink is basically fed to the printhead so the printhead is there are nozzle, multiple nozzles are lined up and wherever you are fitting the uh, this ink into the printhead then the printhead we can generate droplets by different mechanism either by it can be by thermal or it can also be by piezo okay so basically just remember the droplets are being generated by this paint jet that's why it is called ink jet because we are getting droplets from this by the help of this printer and now these droplets can be printed anywhere right where whatever like in stage or somewhere we can basically we can generate these droplets and we can print them right now this technology is very important for the for pharmaceutical applications i will come how basically you can see when or a structure like this live streaming is on now i'll come to that uh, now we have discussed our different 3d printing technology like stereolithography there is the very fast technology where we use photopolymers and with the help of laser we do solidification or photopolymerization so that we can get the solid structure we have also seen selective laser sintering where we use powders either it can be ceramic powder metal powders for those things mostly it is used but we can also use different other power powders and with the help of a laser we can solidify the or we can sinter the materials to get the 3d structures we have also seen inkjet 3d printing where we have like we use different uh, like a uh, water like viscous water like material uh, liquid material and then with the help of this printer we can gener generate droplets and then those droplets can be patterned we can get the structure right and those we can use some there we can use some support structure to the generate the 3d structure also we have seen <clears throat> binder jetting where we have a powder bed and with the help uh, with the help of that 
uh, binder jet that the print head where it sprinkled the powder on the and the on the powder bed at certain certain locations so that we can have the structure so these the various things so these various things can be used for pharmaceutical applications drug formulation like we can use drop on drop deposition that is droplet solidification we can have stereotherapy that is solidification of the photosensitive liquid we can also have we can also have extrusion based system uh, either it can be solid or semi solid where it can be the pressure it can be pressure assisted syringe or fused device modeling by which we can make the objects so they are basically you can you are extruding the materials through the uh, through the syringe and you can make in the we are making the structures we have also seen selective laser selective sintering or melting where the powders can be used but with the help of laser we can do this print structure and also we have also seen drop on solid deposition so where basically we have the powder bed and we can sprinkle powders so all these different types of things can be possible for pharmaceutical doses form and you see this is just a, some uh, some different types of structures possible and here there is no limitation to design because you can make whatever the design you would like okay you can also you can make different layered powder layered powder suppose different drugs are loaded into different layers so this multi layered drugs multi layered doses forms can be built where basically you can create different layers and in diff different layers having different drugs suppose and how it will be this thing because whenever this this tablet is getting disintegrated so what will happen it will start releasing the drug but from the very from the surface first then from the then one by from the first layer very first layer then the core layers right so something like that so the different drugs can be administered or delivered from this thing more than more than one drugs can be created also we can create different pore structure the advantage of having pore structure is because now the fluid can easily perfuse through this pore structure so it, this drugs can be administered very fast so they, we must have heard of some fast releasing doses form right so that like even you put that drug on the on your mouth it should melt it immediately so the drug can be fast, delivered very fast so that kind of things are possible so different types of doses form like similarly uh, just just to give an example kids they don't like to take medicine right because they don't uh, because their thing is that uh, they don't like the shape of the baby they don't like the shape and color of the medicine or the drugs or the, the tablets or what the doses forms so we can create doses form of a, their of their uh, favorite cartoon right so that kind of doses forms or you can create different cartoon shapes uh, dr uh, drugs cartoon shape medicines or uh, doses form that can be so the, the kids will like that also you can use different colors to enhance the thing so the, all this uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing additive manufacturing or the 3d printed drug manufacturing starts with the imagination so wherever you think of something like you think think past how to start this process like now suppose you are all of you most of you are master students sub and you want to suppose you want to create some doses form by 3d printing what is the best way to start first you think what kind of doses form you will start you will manufacture what would be the shape of that what is the size of that what would be the structure of that do you want to create some innovative design what kind of design you want to manufacture so that there is the basic the very first thing always start with imagination then the next thing is you so that is the thing you think how the your tab how your tablet capsule or whatever that is from how they will look like okay and then you think what materials to be used okay so the next thing is how to select the materials you can think whatever the because nowadays for pharmaceutical manufacturing different types of i will i'll show you some of the examples different types of materials are used so what type of materials to use now when you choose a material you need to choose the print, printing technology based on that material because whatever the different printing technology i have discussed with you you must have noticed they all can handle one or other type of material right so that's what whenever you choose a particular type of material accordingly you can choose a particular type of 3d printers and then you choose your material the design is suppose the design you make with the help of some uh, cad designing cad modeling software you make your design and then that thing is loaded to the printer you load your material to the printer and then you can make the manufacturing you can make different types of 
process forms and then that can be administered so this is the whole schematic how basically you will go for manufacturing pharmaceutical doses form with the help of 3d printing here i have given some list how different types of technology will help you what are the different types of materials suppose with the fdm that is the fused deposition modeling technique or fused filament fabrication process how different how you can do that so these all different types of material can be used for can be used for printing the printing structures with the, with the help of this technology like pva hpc hpmc hpa hpmcs and others like alginate cartridges all this like you and many of you like you must be aware of all these materials like you must have heard about these materials in your other classes like in your pharmacy classes in your some pharmaceutical sorry pharmaceutics or other classes other courses so where so all these materials can be used for but the requirement here is we need to have the film for this material in filament form so first the, the material should be made into a filament or oil and then that can be used similarly for pam there is a pressure assisted manufacturer who has the same thing like you can use this material in the um, you can basically develop a solution kind of stuff or a gel hydrogel kind of stuff uh, with, the, with the help of this material and then you load that into the syringe and then actually basically you are pushing the syringe to manufacture this similarly for other material like here also you will be inject kind of this is kind of inject material where basically you load the material and then you can sprinkle them with pieces and the electric deposition that is also another electric deposition that is also another method where which you can basically hit the material through this process and where you can load you can print the structure Similarly, there are other powder bed fusion system. Just see the what different types of there. Different types of materials are used for different printers. So these are the materials. They like this can be a guiding chart for you. Where if you search, so these 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 things so these things are openly available on the internet. You can search for these resources. There are many resources available on this. How to choose a material for 3D printing of uh, 3D printing suppose 3D printing of tablets. What kind of technology you can use? So those things are available. I'm not going to details, but the very first the, the, this this uh, slide uh, shows you how actually basically if you want to print a particular doses form, how you can go for that. Basically, you need this. We need a, some active pharmaceutical ingredients and excipients. So those things will be loaded. Those will mix together to develop the formulas. And first, now here you can choose different types of technology. But suppose this is one types of technology. This is a extrusion based 3d printing right but here if it is halt belt extrusion then you must have understood if it is halt made extrusion then you cannot use any active pharmaceutical sorry active pharmaceutical ingredient those are those can be destroyed upon heating like your peptides growth factors or some other drugs that if the, those drugs can be destroyed or can get destroyed by heating then you cannot use them only heat stable drug can be used in this process so these drugs can be mixed with excipients, then that can be loaded to the printer, 3D printer, and then you can make different pharmaceutical products. Here also, this is telling you how the, what different types of materials, like you can use plastic materials, also you can use thermoplastic materials, photopolymers, powders of different types of powders, like powders can be used. Also, like these are the, these are the things, like these are the materials or the technology can be used for pharmaceutical manufacturing. Like for drop on solid that can be used like this is one drug isoniazid right this, this is basically used for as a drug for in case of implantation to prevent the rejection that kind of thing so you can use this material these materials PLLA other material and that you can use for sustained release of, uh, of this drug you can make it by drop on it selective laser and center laser center is used for oro dispersible tablets right or parasite like suppose like paracetamol and these all these materials can be used for to aid this process to have this this kind of tablets similarly for liquid solidification tablets paracetamol, paracetamol is taken and amino amino sialic acid that can be used as an excipient and then you can have the similarly i'm not going to the details of this so this chart is and this is also i have taken from some sources you can also look into the internet and then you, you will find this kind of examples and you can read into that now I'm coming to the uh, almost last part of my talk when I will discuss some examples. Those are very important advancement in this particular tab in this in this uh, 3D printing in pharmacy. And I have taken this from various studies. 
so to give to tell you to or to discuss with you or to show you how this technology can be beneficial for pharmaceutical manufacturing or pharmaceutical doses from a patient and further for patient use like this uh, this scientist they have developed commercial pvf filament and what they have done they loaded the drug within this pvf filament means what they have done first they used the material pva probably many of you know what is pva right pva is polyvinyl alcohol it is a water soluble polymer right so what you can do just pva you can make filament out of that pva with the help of there is a extruder there are some extruders available by which if you load the pva pallets or if you load the pvs or this thing like uh, pva granules then basically you can make the pva filament right so the pva filament there we when you are load, making the pva filament that time you can also load the drugs within this now when you load the drugs then you can make the pva filament where the drug is already loaded now this pva filament can be used for making tablets or different other different types of different sizes different uh, having different structures different geometry of tablets can be manufactured with the help of this pva filament having load, loaded with drugs and then you can create the structure and now this pva because pva is water soluble whenever the structure is made so this structure this will be water dispersible solvent or sorry the water soluble tablets so we can, can easily take that and the pva will be dispersed and the drug will be loaded also polymeric nano capsules suspension can be loaded also in the, within this pva filament that can be used similarly suppose you want to make bilayer tablets so this there is another study where they have done bilayer tablets what they have done they have created these two parts separately and that can be two different drugs can be loaded one drug can be loaded into this first first suppose maybe the top part another drug can be loaded into the bottom part right so this and these two parts can be manufactured separately this can also be manufactured together by first suppose first the this bottom part is manufactured then the this syringe and come and come on the top of this and then manufacture the other part so this kind of bilayer tablets can be easily manufactured and these tablets can be used for like suppose in this case they have used for gastro floating tablets where how it can be floated on the gastro gastro floating tablets are mostly used for what purpose where we want to retain the tablet in the inside the gastric cavity for longer time so that the drug can be released in the inside the gastric gastro means in the gastric fluid for longer time so that's why gastric gastro floating tablets are manufactured how you can the tablets can be floated because the tablet can float if the density of the tablet is very less right so that the tablet can be how we can create that less density if we create a less dense tablet how we can create the less density if we create this kind of porous structure by introducing porous structure porosity we can create the uh, tablets that those are very light to it and then so that can be used for gastro floating tablets similar this is also another process by which we can create this kind of porous structure with the help of uh, extrusion based 3d by 3d printing process using some materials where the drug is also loaded and then we can using some binder we can make actually bind that uh, bind that uh, yeah, bind the structure in a well and then we can heat them and also we can produce this thing so this debinding process of layer wise products and grain part by submerging in a solvent then sintering to a final density so that kind of structure this kind of process can also be used other thing is there is a study it's a, it's, an, it's a very interesting study where they are they are interest was to see how the geometry of the doses form can influence the drug release profile you must have missed uh, you must have studied studied different drug release profiles right starting from zero order release to first order to second order candidates and different other things you have read and also like burst release or delayed release sustained release continuous release all these different terminologies you are must be aware of with all these different terminologies right now this study what they have seen how the different types of doses form can influence the release profile now suppose they have created this kind of cylindrical or this very uh, this kind of tablet this kind of cylindrical cubical cubical structure pyramidal structure spheroidal and this kind of ring like structure or uh, what is this called donut like structure like that kind of structure they be made manufacture different type of dolly so doses form of different structure having different structure then they evaluated what is the effect of the release profile of these things of this study right so that is a very interesting study so this kind of things also somebody can do this and also like other what other things you do suppose you want to create a structure like this you must have heard of entry coded tablet right 
where you want to miss you want to control the release of this drug at certain environment at certain ph also you want to want to achieve some kind of release profile like such in this case suppose a zero order release profile okay so how we can do you can create a drug doses form there are no shell is there also there are some kind of cell cell structure is there because you are using a additive manufacturing process you can easily create this kind of shell over the your tablet so this can whole process can be manufactured at a time suppose here you are creating the structure like suppose first the a shell material is printed then the structure material or the your tablet material that is being printed and also the side side by means the outer area the cell material is printed so that you can basically you can print the structure accordingly so that you have the your active drug loaded into the excipient that is print that is present in the shell in, in sorry inside the core and the shell is you have a cell material that will prevent the de degradation and also the release of this drug for, drug for certain extent and here different means you can play with the cell size the thick thickness of the cell and also what is the infill infill means how porous is your structure suppose you want to create only 20 percent structure and 80 percent porosity 100 percent infill means that means you don't have you don't have, don't have any porosity but you have 100 percent field structure so this can different type structures can be printed here also the same thing is shown here you can print tap you just structures with different size shape having different porosity now this is almost the end like this this is a very beautiful study where and this drug is this 3d printed drug is us approved us fda they have approved this drug in 2015 and this is a very important <coughs> contribution of additive manufacturing towards pharmacy like there is a uh, pennsylvania based apricia pharmaceuticals that is the name of the company apricia pharmaceuticals they have pr printed this 3d printed spray time tablet that is the levetris le, sorry levetris uh, tiracetam that tablets i know you know this tablet is used for epilepsy right so now this 3d printed tablet spray time tablet what is the advantage of this thing you need these videos will uh, will show you just observe this video you see this is the apricia zip dose the 3d printed drug it dissolves very fast when it comes in contact with the liquid or water or saliva it may be whatever okay very fast now this is the otc over that counter melt fast melt drug that is available for epilepsy and this is the drug you see here the dispersion is complete but in this case still it is not complete though it is a fast melt drug available and it is manufactured by conventional manufacturing process but in this case the dispersion is complete within maybe within a few seconds but in this case it disperses almost it takes like 20 seconds or 30 seconds it takes to disperse completely so this is the advantage of having 3d printing 3d printed drugs where you can basically you can control the property of the medicine drug by and how why this actually in this case the dispersion is very fast because it is a porous drug porous tablet and you know that whenever it is a porous tablet when it touches it means when it comes in contact with the water the water basically diffuse through the pores very fast and it dissolves the whole thing the advantage of this technology the technology they call zip jaws but this is remember that i discussed that binder jetting process the similar process is binder jetting process only they have used to create this 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 thing this tablet uh, this 3d printed pritam because it has this technology allows that them to make for a structure that's why they can this is a very fast dissolving tablet <clears throat> and by using this 3d printing they could use make this custom drug and also do this process miss help the help to manufacturing this kind of very fast uh, doses very fast soluble drug doses forms that can this because you know that in case of cardiac arrest or in case of uh, this kind of uh, what is it called epilepsy you need you know that the drug has to be administered delivered very fast so the drug can act very fast so that we can save the patient so that in that kind of things this this uh, 3d printing can come handy also 3d printing could also enable someday we this is the like this is kind of future situation you know many of you are aware about dispensing pharmacy what is that dispensing is pharmacy is like whenever the drug is one of the doctors actually prescribe the medicine then it goes to the pharmacist who what the pharmacist does he dispense the drug means he manufactured the doses form and then he gave 
give this drug to the patients. But nowadays, the dispensing pharmacy is almost obsolete. Not there are not many uh, pharmacy dispense pharmacists who actually manufacture uh, yeah, who can deliver who can actually basically administer or give drugs to doses from to the patients. But one day that can again be uh, rejuvenated by with the help of the 3D printer. What we does the dispensing pharmacy if they are trained to on this 3D printing, what they, they can do, doctor prescribe the drug, it goes to the dispensing pharmacist, he can actually 3D print the, the tablet and then that he can deliver the tablet to the patients. Because by doing that, he can actually control the amount of drug going to the tablets, right? So that kind of things can be done in future. Now, this is the most important achievements for 3D printing and pharmaceutical field. In almost like <clears throat> in 2000, before 2010, we are doing some like all this, this thing were done. And then after 2000 to 2020, Spritum is the very first example where FDA approved, FDA products are built. And then there are now there are many such advancement in this field. And I will look here, I encourage you to look through this. But there are many challenges in this field. Of finding appropriate material is a major challenge because 3D printer, you know that in 3D printer, it doesn't act, it support or accept all different types of materials. It can only, it can only, only able to print some materials within 3D printer. So the limited choice of materials, that is a limitation. Maintaining desired properties after printing process. The printing process itself can impart some, uh, mis or it destroys, maybe destroys the active pharmaceutical into ingredient. It imparts certain, it, it, may, it may change the property of the drug. So those things can be, can needs to be studied. <coughs> but mostly the currently pharmaceutical manufacturing process are done in a continuous process. But to uh, where, and also the industry, they need to make drugs in bulk or in continuous process in abundant number. So the, but additive manufacturing doesn't support that. So we need to evolve so that we can, that manufacturing, yeah, that, uh, bulk manufacturing can be done, but always the in the lab scale we always can do that. Like we can design an experiment where suppose we have we need to make a certain the tablets of certain design, certain or having certain drugs in certain combinations. So those things can be easily done in lab scale. So can traditional in vitro testing methods be used for 3D printed drug products? That is also one challenge. Now, whatever the because after manufacturing that does there is an evaluation process or assessment, right? You you do that thing you do different other things right the dissolution process how the drug dissolves, the drug release profile all these things you do different things drug stability all these things you tested now all this evaluation process can be used for 3d printed drug products that is also one thing that also we need to look for should 3d printed doses form be required to meet extra more extra special requirements that so the regulated regulated body whether they should think of the extra Evaluation process for 3D printed uh, doses form that also can be a option or that can also be a, a challenge. And there is also a strong need to train specialists in pharmaceutical 3D printing. Now, like, suppose you all are trained in pharmaceutical, suppose you all are trained in th pharmaceutics or pharmaceutical manufacturing, then you also should be trained in 3D printing so that you can handle 3D printers, so that you can make manufacture 3D printed, printing doses form with the help of this 3D printed technique. Okay. I should thank you all for your for listening and i will be happy to answer if you have any questions comments and concerns this is my email id you can also write to me i will be happy to read your questions if you have and also i will try my best to answer you if you have also or if some of you want to work with me i will definitely you can write to me i'll be happy to assist if you want to work with me thank you very much and at last definitely i should thank uh, clpt for giving me the opportunity to deliver this talk and also discuss uh, this topic and this is this topic is very close to my heart because I work on 3D printing But for a different applications problem. I work on 3D bioprinting for tissues and organs artificial tissue organ development for for tissue engineering applications Anyway, thank you all. So I'll be happy to answer Over to you so It was a very wonderful lecture sir. So with uh, good information so we'll see some uh, questions sir now yeah sure so one question is in uh, chat box uh, the purnakon asked some question sir uh, incorporate uh, incorporation this 3d printing technology in formulation of conventional dosage forms yes 
can you incorporate this uh, trading uh, 3d printing technology in conventional dosage forms that is the yes. question yeah yeah conventional yeah. dosage form can be manufactured with this technology mm -hmm. only thing is the process would be different in conventional manufacturing you have seen that that i have one slide i have shown you where actually basically you have the process like uh, just let me go through the go to the stairs Looks like a very fast. Uh, yeah, conventional manufacturing actually basically these are the, all the steps are required, right, to make the final doses form. But in case of in case of additive manufacturing process or 3D printing, we means we can minimize these steps and we can actually follow the other. Areas. We need to develop a different process to manufacture the pharmaceutical final product. Okay, sir. Next we'll go to another question. So, yeah. Is 3D printing is uh, given only our desire and design a drug only for a model to us or uh, directly involved in large scale production, huge doses? <clears throat> okay. So the thing is that uh, as I told you, 3D printing nowadays, 3D, 3D printing is not a technology for mass manufacturing. Okay. Because here it is a it is a technology for customized manufacturing. Okay. Suppose you have a customized need, you need to have tab. Suppose as I given one example, okay, suppose you need to have tablets of different sizes tablets of diff having a uh, tab uh, tablets having drugs of different quantities like as i give an example 400 mg paracetamol 500 mg 600 mg so because we all need different different amount of drugs right so that can be well handled by uh, this 3d printing custom means mass manufacturing differently conventional manufacturing technology is much much better for mass manufacturing 3d printing is not such with 3D printing, customized manufacturing can be easily done. Okay, sir. We'll see next question. Sir, is there any additive manufacturing of 3D printing for uh, international solutions? International solution means uh, something like uh, maybe for. Uh, so they have typed the same thing, sir. So uh, maybe I don't know who has asked this question. So if you can uh, explain what do you mean by this international applications? Or, uh, I think uh, the question may be like uh, any additives you can able to internet, internal applications they are asking or international applications. Yeah, maybe sir. So okay. any additive, sir. The question is maybe the additive manufacturing by using uh, 3D printing. Yes, yes. No, no, 3D printing is an additive process, additive manufacturing process. Okay. So we're basically this is this is an additive process because here we are adding the material slowly, liquid drop by drop, or uh, or very small quantities of material added to have the whole product, means layer by layer to make the whole structure. Here basically the thing is that we can use whatever the material you you are using for conventional manufacturing, we can use all this. Okay. We can use all this and but the process would be different, but we can use all this. And we can uh, make a stand, uh, make a make the method a little bit different to aid the manufacturing process. And these are well can be well used for different applications. Different, like it can be used for human applications, veterinary applications. All this can be easily done. Yes, sir. Sir, another question. Yes. So, entry coated tablets can you manufacture with uh, 3D printing? And again, uh, is there possibility of 360 degrees coating of a tablet? Yes, that is a very, very good question. And I have already I have given there one example that can be done. There are some technology, there are some uh, similarly recently. Yeah, so something like this. As I said, like you can create a something kind of core shell tablet. Suppose the core is your drug loaded in some excipients, and the cell is the material that is the entry coating that you use. Whatever the material you use for entry coating, that can be used here for to manufacturing this. The whole thing can be manufacturing at a time without. It's like in other cases, first we manufacture the core material and then we have a coating over that with the entry coating that material, right? But in this case, the whole process can be done at a time to have this entry coating tablet. Sir, another question, sir, by Rajesh. Yes. So can see, sir. So if you manufacture any drug molecule with 3D printing, so any influence in uh, clinical trials or therapeutic action? Yeah, that there can be some in some, there can be, yeah, if I understood, 
if he wants to understand if there is can if there can be a change in the uh, drug response or this thing after 3d printing or in the clinical trial or something so then i can say that like there can be certain cases but you need to evaluate that and that's why in vitro testing in vivo testing is very important after this manufacturing of these drugs with the 3d printing technique and to see, evaluate whether how they respond in the in vitro and in vivo setup yes sir any that uh, such uh, studies are published sir, 3d printing yes, yes, will give you there are there are there are a lot of studies where people have done this optimist they, they have evaluated the uh, in vitro three printed drug on animal models okay i've not included but definitely if you search in internet or search in uh, search for this literatures definitely will get some study where people have to have done that okay sir that are the questions which okay. are there in the chat box in youtube so sir uh, on the behalf of our college i am very thankful for you sir to immediately accepting for uh, the guest lecture on 3d printing yeah thank you very much so i am giving a wonderful uh, lecture sir so thank you very much sir yeah thank you too. thank you mr ramanna and thank you all of you like clpt members team member like uh, the faculty and staff thank you very much for your support and also provide yeah, miss inviting me for this lecture and all the students thank you very much for listening and all the best i hope uh, this lecture is uh, useful for you and also if you have further questions you can always write to me thank you all thank you sir thank so you. i sign up then huh yes sir okay